All right, boys, I've got to tell you about our next guest. I had to water it down because he only had 10 minutes. If I told you all the things he's done, we wouldn't get to ask him a question. So I didn't let me make tell you a little this. bit about him, though. He played footy with West Perth, was a... Uh, on the senior list for Footscray, cruel injury finished his career, so he couldn't play on. Coach <coughs> of West Perth, he started on the radio, broadcasted his first footy game in 1971, Western Australia against Victoria. In 86, he joined Channel 7. He is the voice of footy, and certainly in the AFL Grand Finals, he is the man. He's commentated more gold medal wins at the Olympics than any other Australian commentator of the TV area. He's written two books, Centimetre Perfect, and then he had This Is Ambitious, still in all that time the number one footy commentator, and now he's had time to write a song. I can't believe this. That they're going to play on Grand Final Day, the song Last One Standing. We talk about the great Dennis Committee. Dennis, thanks for your time. You, Phil? It is. Okay, I thought I recognised that voice. Yeah. That's an illustrious. That's an illustrious cast you've got there. You're very kind to me. Actually, the uh, the cruel injury I had was that I couldn't get the footy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know that, but I was trying to talk you up, Dennis. <laughs> well, thanks, Phil. Thanks very much. Dennis, let's talk about the song. From the moment you had the idea to yeah. to, to where it is now, how long did that time? How how much time elapsed? Well couple of years actually I wasn't really conscious of writing a song or doing anything I I actually sort of just uh, teamed up with a band or a couple of guys in Los Angeles because I enjoyed their music I'd never heard of them I found their demo album actually at a site on the net in the United States and I bought it and I contacted the bloke and I said this is pretty good you should be proud of it but as I say I didn't know him from Adam and then uh, I went to America about uh, I suppose 12 months later, and decided I'd catch up with him. One thing led to another, and I sort of helped him finance an album. And uh, with that, uh, suddenly sort of a uh, rapport developed. He came out here last year, finals time in Melbourne, and they played quite a few venues around Melbourne. And uh, one evening after they'd seen their first game of Australian Rules footy, uh, they decided they had a tune in their head, and uh, they weren't familiar with the terminology of Australian Rules. So I... uh, I threw every cliche I could muster at them, and uh, they came up with a song which knocked my socks off two days later when they performed it. So it all happened very quickly, but it was around at about grand final time Mm. last year, this song, and I went back and recorded a hard copy of it, and that's where we got to uh, play it to the AFL. So it's been a uh, rather long journey, and it wasn't even with that aim. Uh, Dennis, it's um, watching you and uh, Bruce in action, or listening That's to you. Curly. I recognise that voice. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have recognised the hands anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. Uh, you're still enjoying, I can see you, you're still enjoying the calling, but are you finding it today with the amount of stoppages and scrimmages and players around the ball becoming more difficult? Well, actually, I reckon, Neil, and uh, it's a moot point, I mean, it depends how you approach it, but I reckon uh, you're onto something there. The only thing is, it may actually be easier to call, you know, like because it is slower. Yeah, uh, it depends, oh, yeah. depends what you personally prefer. Some guys like it quicker. Some guys like more time to sort of uh, just natter on. And if you want to do that, then uh, with these constant ball-ups and stoppages, you can do that as well. I, I think, if anything, with all that passing around in the back line and what have you, the game's actually become easy to call. I mean, uh, when you were playing, we sort of had to keep an eye out behind the play to uh, see what was going on. There'd be, there'd be this massive blue across our no. back and you'd be thinking, what started? The... Oh, Curly's there. No, never back there. Exactly well, right, Dennis. Dennis, just going back to the actual song, uh, is, is it true uh, that you wrote the actual lyrics for the song? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, so I did. how long did it take you to do that? Uh, well, probably two or three hours. We sat around... Just you know, that all? Well, it's... It, <laughs> I've got to be careful what I say. I've already uh, put down my football career. Uh, look, I don't think it was that hard. Uh, really, really, when you think about a song, yep. it's, it's more to do with the tune and the chorus, obviously, and that's what makes this. I mean, uh, the words are almost incidental. Now, I mean, I don't think they're, they're hopeless, but at the same time, I think uh, they had the tune and the chorus in their head. So a couple of people have said, well, why Americans? Well, I could have gone anywhere with the words. It wouldn't have sort of as uh, Humphrey Bogart would have said, uh, amounted to a hill of beans. I mean, really, you need the tune uh, and you need the chorus. So they had that and they then sort of moulded the words and made them really fit what they had in their head because I didn't quite understand uh, what it was they were thinking, but I was trying to help them. It was actually a really interesting process. You know, I, yep. it was like sort of watching a young footballer develop through his early games or what have you. Same thing. You know, these guys sat down, got a tune, let's do it. And I'm thinking, well, wow. You know, I, I sat there and I was really impressed with the way they went about it. This oh. guy, I think he's world class, and that's why I got involved. 
But uh, when you go to Los Angeles, where he's based, he's originally from Boston, uh, you see how many wonderful talents there are there and how few of them are going to get a chance. And I, yeah, I, look, I've been very lucky along the way, and uh, I just found this uh, terrific as a hobby. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have helped me, and uh, now and again I reckon it's, uh, it's worthwhile helping some bloke. Yeah, I've good got on a buzz you. out of it. Exactly. All right, well, you talk about helping someone else. Why don't you stay with us just for a little bit, Dennis? We'll play a bit and we'll come back to you. This is uh, the tune that Dennis put together. Thanks, Phil. Well done. The last one standing. Well, Get the tingles. I can feel does. the tingles going. And, and Dennis, that'll be played on Grand Final Day as, as the winning team does a lap of honour. That's right. Yeah, that's the idea. So hopefully it becomes, although you can be unlucky, I was going to say, hopefully it becomes part of the culture of footy. Not yeah. trying to push anyone else off. It's no. just that this is sort of a, a new spot, if you like. Uh, but you can be unlucky in your first year. Suddenly the buggers change it to October. <laughs> so uh, we, I've always wanted to say this, though, boys. We're going back into the studio. How cool is that? Yeah. <laughs> 